everything's been really seamless. Uh, we do have one more day of prep today. Got a chance to go over and look at the stadium, get a walk through there around 11, and then we got to practice. Um, we always practice the day before a game, real important for us. And then we'll have meetings tonight, and we're excited about the challenge. It's a great football team. We're going to play, you know, conference champions, uh, one of the top teams in the country, and we're, we're really looking forward to it and excited about it. So. Questions, and again, let us get a mic to you, and please introduce yourselves. Arms for questions. Let's start here on the aisle. Uh, AJ Jacobs with Rivals.com. Uh, coach Kelly, four BCS Bulls in a row. What have you learned as a coach coaching Bulls these last four years? I think you learn, you know, really – uh, what, how hard it is to get there, you know, and that's the one thing I think um, as a team, you know, as a staff and as, as a group of players, um, to not take it for granted. It's, it's a truly special thing to be able to play in a BCS game. Um, you know, some of our freshmen that, that are, are, you know, came in as freshmen four years ago, and I think they think it's kind of the norm, but, it, you know, we make sure they understand it's extremely hard to get there and, and appreciate it and understand what it takes um, to get there and make sure your job is to, to pass on to the younger guys what, what it took to get there. And it's not a uh, surprise that we made it there and it's not a, you know, luck that you made it there. It's, it's about our preparation and, um, you know, always constantly trying to hammer home that, that, that issue uh, to our guys that, that, you know, don't take anything for granted. Coach to the left. Uh, one of the recent trends in, in the NFL is more pistol formation, and a lot of people are, are tracing that back to you in some ways in your program. Just wanted to get your thoughts on sort of what, what seems to be a melding of the NFL and college games, and if that makes it easier for players and coaches to switch back and forth. Uh, don't know, haven't been there. Don't run the pistol offense, so that's not what we do. Um, Chris Alt at Nevada actually invented the pistol offense, and actually just retired, uh, one of the great football coaches out there. But um, there's a lot of different ways to play football. But that, that particular part, the pistol, don't know that very well. That's not what we do. Um, we're more of a spread run team. Um, so, you know, our trends go in one way or the other. I think, you know, I've said this a long time ago, if you weren't in the room with Amos Alonzo Stagg and Newt Rockney when they invented this game, you stole it from somebody else. So um, anybody that's a good coach is going to learn from other people and see how they can implement it in their system. You know, and I think anything you do has to be personnel driven. You know, you, you, you got to be able to adapt to the personnel that you have. Um, there's a lot of great offenses out there, but does it fit with the personnel you have? And I think the key is, is making sure that, that what you're doing is giving your, your players a chance to be successful. So. In the back, please identify yourself. Chip Warren Williams, Oregon Duck Football News. Now that you're on the eve of, of this bowl game, can you reflect back on what it's been like for you to coach this squad? Yeah, I'm not a big reflect back guy, to be honest with you. Uh, our, uh, we're just getting ready to play a game, and we're excited about it. So, but it, but it has been fun. You know, this group, um, we're young. You know, I've said it before. We got 65 freshmen and sophomores, but the the older core group we have, and, and uh, there's not a lot of them, but the Deion Jordans and the Michael Clays and the Kikos and the Kenyons have done an unbelievable job of making sure that these young kids understand what this is all about. And I and I think our young kids really matured very quickly. But a, a lot of that is because of what those guys did, you know, and, and uh, the same things that come out of Kenyon's mouth are the same things that come out of my mouth or Coach Campbell's mouth. And, you know, I think the one thing about our team is that we're all on the same page. Questions for Coach Kelly? Here in the front row to the left. Yes, uh, could you, you were just talking about different uh, offensive approaches and, and, and how they develop. How did you develop what you do? Um, you know, it really started for us, to be honest, when we were in New Hampshire and we were running out of fullbacks. And, and we still wanted to be able to run the ball, but we wanted to get our best 11 guys on the field. Um, and it, it really just started to develop more out of necessity than, you know, we wanted to change. It was just how, how can we still be an effective team? You know, we were in the Northeast. You've got to be able to run the ball when you're, when you're in uh, areas like that just because of the weather and things like that. So, um, you know, what's the best way to, to try to expand our running game um, but still getting our best personnel on the field. So that's kind of how it started for us. To the left, please identify yourself. Dave Stewart, uh, Metro Sports, Kansas City. Uh, Bill Snyder is, is, um, likes contact in practice and preparation. You guys have had five. No, personally? In, in <laughs> practice. I know his team, but not coach himself, I don't think, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, do you have a philosophy on, on balancing the 
conditioning side of it with with contact and bowl preparation? Yeah, we now we've uh, we're kind of similar in that manner. You know, our Mondays is every Mondays we're in helmets and shoulder pads, and every Tuesday and Wednesday we're in uh, full pads. You know, I believe you you have to practice in a certain manner at the, at the college level. Um, you know, to, to keep that physicality when you play games on Saturday. So um, we've kept to the same script. You know, all, all we do and when we practice and when we prepare is that, you know, those days are spaced out. So we don't put two Tuesdays back to back, you know. So we're going to have a Monday practice, Tuesday practice, a Wednesday practice, a Thursday practice. Then we took a couple of days off and then we'd start that cycle back over again. But, um, you know, great blocking, great tackling, all those other things are byproducts of fundamentals and I think they need to be practiced on a daily basis. Never thought of that. I mean, I get asked a question, but I don't think anybody knows any answers until someone does it. But I, I think the Washington Redskins are doing a pretty good job with, I, I forgot the name of their quarterback, but <laughs> I think he's done a decent job. And, and the kid at Carolina has done a pretty good job. You know, but it, it depends. You know, I, I don't know. You know, I've never coached in that league, and um, I've visited practices and talked to people about it. But, you know, the, the one thing about that and the one thing about everything is that you've got to have good players. You know, I think... Sometimes the coaching aspect is, is, is way overrated. We don't play the game. You know, I think uh, college football is a personnel-driven game. The National Football League is a personnel-driven game. And your job as a coach, very simply, is to put your players in position where they can make plays and then get out of the way and let them go make them. So. Numerous open NFL jobs. I'm sure your players hear that. How do you deal with, uh, how do you answer those kind of questions from your players? I have never been asked a question by one of my players. You know, and I think one of the tenets of how we do things in our program is that we don't let outside influences control our lives. So, um, you know, it's kind of just noise to us. And they've never said a word to me. I've never said a word to them. I, I, I've always believed that praise and blame is all the same. So, you know, it, you can't, again, be a selective participant and decide to listen to things that you think are, be, are good being said about you and then just kind of block out things that being bad being said about you. So, you know, our, our team's extremely focused. Uh, it, it, it's... If you get a chance to get inside our team, which is never going to happen, but if you ever did get a chance to get inside our team, you know, what we talk about, what we focus on, uh, really has nothing to do with what's going on outside. And, and that's the great thing about um, coaching kids of that age. You know, they, they, don't, they don't get caught up in it. I don't think our kids read message boards, read newspapers, all that other thing. You know, they just want to hang out with each other, want to have a good time. Uh, excited to get back to meetings. we got position meetings coming up at 930. And, you know, we're getting ready to go play Fiesta Bowl, and that's a challenge for us. So that's what we're excited about. So.